Hi, have you never flown a drone before? Did you just get a DJI Phantom 3 Standard Edition as a gift? If you answered yes to those questions, then this video is for you. It should contain all the basic important information so you can start flying as quickly as possible. There's tons of resources to read and the documents, tutorials for DJI are a bit scattered across multiple locations on the DJI website as well as the DJI YouTube channel. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of information on how to get things started included in that big fancy box that you got. All of that reading and watching can get a bit overwhelming, so I'm trying to combine it all here in one generalized beginner's resource. I just bought my dad one of these DJI Phantoms for the 2016 Father's Day sale, and I'm hoping this will help him, and all you new DJI Phantom owners, to get a quick hands-on understanding for how to get things started for flying your new DJI Phantom 3 Standard Edition. So what's the first step? Um, charge everything. Charge your battery, charge your controller, make sure and charge your cell phone. All three of those things are going to be necessary to fly your, your drone, obviously. The battery takes about 90 minutes to charge with the provided AC charger. And the controller takes about two and a half hours to charge with it connected to your computer with the provided USB cable. The battery lasts around 20 to 30 minutes with flight usage, while the controller can last about three hours. Remember, your phone or tablet needs to be fully charged. That battery life should always be taken into consideration when you're flying. So, how do you charge? Well, first up, pretty straightforward. You're going to go ahead and use your adapter, your AC adapter, that came with the unit to charge a battery. You're going to flip that little cover open, and they line up directly with the points on your battery. Just like so. Plug that into the wall and you're looking at about approximately mm, 90 minutes charging time, roughly. And that's going to give you 20 to 30 minutes of flight. That's it for the battery. As for your controller, which is this guy right here, you're going to take the included USB cable. You're going to plug the uh, micro connection right here into the end. And then this other port you're going to plug into your computer or a wall adapter. Uh, if you plug it into the computer, it'll take about two and a half hours. If you plug it into a rapid state charger that is faster than the standard voltage that you're going to get, then you could probably have a faster charge for this, but it's not going to matter too terribly much because this lasts a lot longer. Okay, now you have everything charged. Next, you need to install the DJI Go app on your phone or tablet you'll be using for your Phantom 3 standard. You do this through the Google Play Store if you have an Android device, or the Apple App Store if you have an Apple device. DJI strongly suggests that you install the app while connected to Wi-Fi as it is a very large download and will use up a lot of your cell data otherwise. So how do you do that? Well, my dad is using the Android application. And so, uh, or the Android, I should say, device. So we're going to go to the Play Store, the Google Play Store. You're going to go into the little search up there. Whoops. Search up there. And you're going to look for DJI Go. You'll notice that icon right there. That's what you're looking for. You'll go ahead and hit that. And you'll go ahead and install the app. I already have it installed, so you can see that it says uninstall or open for me in particular. But uh, install that on your phone, and uh, then we'll go forward to the next step. By the way, to see if your phone or tablet is compatible or recommended or tested by DJI, check the Phantom 3 standard specs on the DJI website here. Scroll down on that page to the app slash live view section and then look at the recommended devices section. Always make sure your phone or tablet is updated to the newest version of its operating system no matter what you do. Uh, if you're Apple, if you're Android, you're going to get the best performance if you have the newest OS installed on your phone or tablet. Okay, you've now installed the DJI Go app on your phone or your tablet. Now you need to update the firmware for your Phantom 3 standard. The process for the standard edition is different than the Phantom 3 Advanced or the professional models and is actually easier as of when I made this video. For the standard, you do your firmware update entirely through the DJI Go app. Now it's time to assemble your Phantom 3 standard. Assembly is easy. You simply remove the yellow stickers that are covering your four motors, then install two black mark propellers 
and two Silvermark propellers. You can look down on the propeller mounts and see the black dot above the threads, which signify a black propeller to be installed. Likewise, the tops of the threads that are silver are only for the silver propellers. The propellers were only install in one direction. The front right of your Phantom is motor one. Let's look. So, what is the front of your Phantom? When you're looking down at your Phantom and you see the camera facing towards you, this is the front right. This is motor one. These stickers are gonna be on there initially. I've already taken all of them off of the rest of my particular Phantom. But just for example, that's what your sticker is going to look like. Take those off of the four mounts. This mount, as you can see on top, there is no black dot. It is there for a silver mounted propeller. This one by example, which is uh, motor number two, has a black dot. Therefore, it's going to get a black propeller. Motor three, silver, silver propeller. Motor four, black, black propeller. And that's how you install. Let's go ahead and do one just for example. We'll go ahead and put that guy down right there. Now, you may be wondering what this little tool is that came in your kit. Uh, this is actually used to hold the motor in place. Uh, I've had several people ask me about that. Yes, you can hold it by hand, but it's so much easier. Just put a little pinch on that and then go ahead and give a twist. Make sure it's nice and tight. Don't go too crazy tight. It's gonna get tight in flight, but you wanna give it a little bit of snugness. Now, if you're ever confused about what is tighten and what is release, if you look closely here, you will see, I don't know if it's going to show up on my video here, there's little icons that show, follow this direction and that will unlock. And on this side, follow this direction and that will lock it. And that's going to follow true for each of your propellers as you place them on your Phantom. Now that you've installed all the propellers on your Phantom, make sure that your micro SD card is in the camera. You may need to remove your gimbal clamp to check this. Check to make sure that your battery is installed in the drone. It can only install one way. And finally, mount your phone or tablet on your controller. As an extra precaution, there are propeller guards that you can install which are great for beginners. They help protect the propellers and motors if you accidentally veer into things or crash as you get used to the controls. I'm a beginner, I totally admit that. You'll notice that I've already got the propeller guards on my particular Phantom. Let's go ahead and have a look at what I was talking about for these things. So, to make sure that the SD card is in your Phantom, you will first need to remove your gimbal clamp. The gimbal clamp is this little piece of plastic right here. You kind of have to put your fingers and around it and pull it sideways towards you to pop it off of the, uh, the camera itself. You'll see now that the camera hangs free. And you can see that the micro SD slot is right here on the top of your camera. You also have a camera cover, which you can remove right here. That's just to basically protect your lens. Lastly, the propellers, the propeller guards that I was talking about, that's these guys right here. Propeller guard installation is pretty straightforward. However, it does go ahead and include them in the kit if you decide to go ahead and purchase them. Parts and components. This is specifically the Phantom 3 spare part number two propeller guard, part P36560C5911. I think that holds true for all of them, but just in case, there you go. Important things with this shows the four propeller guards installed. This is what they look like when they're completely set up. It includes some screws, some string, and this cheapo kind of... Uh, how shall we say, not great quality uh, metal for your uh, Allen wrench. You'll see that there's a black Allen wrench in here. That's my own personal Allen wrench. I don't want to strip these wonderful screws. Um, what are these screws that I am talking about? If you flip your Phantom upside down, you're going to be taking off the outermost two screws that are on the arm of, your, uh, of each propeller on your drone. You'll take those out, you'll basically place this in place, you'll use the two screws included, which are longer, that reach down through your propeller and go into where those uh, original screws you took out were. Save those original screws, that's very important if you decide to go ahead and put the propeller guards on. Next, you'll see that I have the string going from each section here all the way around. Um, the way they had it, 
uh, on the instructions is basically just to run it directly underneath here. Uh, I tie it in a knot underneath each of these. So if I have individual failures with either of these, I can just cut it and then replace just that one section. That's just an extra tip. Now, let's explain some parts that are on the aircraft itself. First, you have the gimbal, which is located right here. That's basically what's going to control your uh, camera to keep it steady as your drone is moving side to side. It's amazingly versatile on the DJI Phantom 3 standard. Next is going to be the camera proper, which you can obviously see the lens right here. Uh, third, the micro SD card slot, which we've already kind of covered. Uh, next is going to be the antennas. The antennas are actually hidden in the arms themselves on your DJI Phantom. You'll see that three of them have antennas. The fourth does not. Next, uh, we have the camera status indicator, which is this tiny little hole right here. Uh, there's a little LED that'll flash and whatnot when you do firmware updates for that. Uh, next is going to be your aircraft micro USB port, which is this little guy right here. Let's see if I can pop this open with my short fingernails. Uh, you will never probably have to use this, but if you have the appropriate application, then you can plug in a cable there and get flight data through this port. Next up is going to be your front LEDs. Those are located here and here, underneath these red stickers that your uh, drone comes by default with. These LEDs basically are going to show when your aircraft is in the air where the front is. A little bit harder during the day, absolutely wonderful at night. Very good to get used to seeing those red facing towards you if it's flying towards you. Obviously, if it's facing away, you're going to see the rear indicators. And what are those? These two guys right here on the rear props, props number, let's see, what's that, two and three, those are going to be your... Props two and three are going to be your aircraft status indicators. What else do we have here? These little silver guys are your motors that are going to be the runners for your propellers, which are attached on top. Next up, you have your camera micro USB port. So here's our camera facing forward. Here is the camera micro USB port on the side. Next, you have your intelligent light, your intelligent flight battery, excuse me, on the back. Uh, it has four indicator lights. Uh, which basically help let you know how much battery power you have left. Four obviously means full. One obviously means you're about to run out of battery. Next, you have the link button, which is located just to the right and underneath here, which is used to link your uh, controller with your battery, if you ever have an issue with a connection between the two. Most of the time, you won't. That's pretty much it for the flight unit. Now, what about your controller? The controller has quite a few things on it that are extremely important. Um, obviously, your power switch, which is located right here. Your status LEDs, which are these guys right here, your power LED, and then your battery level indicator. Uh, your lanyard loop, you know, if you decide to get a lanyard and hang it around your neck, that's this guy right here. Um, you can go ahead and uh, mess with your control sticks. Uh, the standard default is going to be this is going and raising your uh, drone up into the air. This is having it descend down to the ground. Rotate left, rotate right. Over on the right stick, you have going forward, going backwards, moving to the left, moving to the right. So most of your movement in one plane is based on the right side if you're in the standard configuration. You also have a couple switches, which help default how these controllers work. You have your S1 switch, which is over here, which you'll see I currently have toggled into the up position. And then you have S2, which is the switch over here, which you'll see I currently have in the middle position. You also have your mobile device holder. That's this little clamp here on top, which is where you would put your cell phone at. And uh, you also have your uh, antenna, which is here in the back. You want to keep that at a 45 degree angle. They say 135 because yes, it's going all the way over 135, but 
45 degrees up from this plane is the way that I describe it. Next up, uh, you have your gimbal dial, which is located in the upper left of your controller. And if you move it up or down, that's going to control your camera lifting up or down on the drone itself. That'll be important when you're recording and flying. Lastly, you have your micro USB port here on the underside. Now, let's talk about the DJI GO app. This app is the core of your interaction with the drone. It gives you real-time view of your drone in flight, controls recording, takes photos, and important sensor calibration. So, let's talk about this app a little bit. I already have it installed on my Note 4 Android device. I'm just going to go ahead and open the app here. We can watch the process in real time. You'll see that it starts off with the uh, Inspire One RAW, which I do not have an Inspire One RAW. I have a Phantom 3 standard. What you're going to do, which is not necessarily intuitive unless you notice these four little dots down there and are used to it, is to scroll to the left. That's going to open up Phantom 4, which you can see up here. You'll notice there is a little drop down arrow right there. If you hit that drop down arrow, it's going to give you options for the Phantom 3, Professional, Advanced, or Standard. This video is for the Phantom 3 Standard, so let's click on the Phantom 3 Standard. Next, you're going to see there's two options at the bottom. You can learn more, learn more about your local regulations and policies, but uh, we really want camera view. So let's go ahead and hit camera. Note, I've already connected my DJI Phantom 3 to my Wi-Fi network. We'll cover this a little bit later. I'm just doing this so I can show you a bit of the options within our program. So, it's going to start off with your aircraft status. You'll notice that I already have all things calibrated and the firmware is the most normal, etc. I'm going to close that. This is your standard camera screen with the DJI GO app. There's several very important things on here. One of the more important things is where it says safe to fly GPS for me. It may not say that for you, depending on whether you have GPS signal in your area. That is your status area. If you click that right where it says that, it'll pop up the aircraft status screen. You'll notice it covers overall status. It talks about what your firmware is at. Mine is the latest version. It'll talk about your IMU. We're going to get to that very shortly. It says mine is normal. Compass. This is where you would do a calibration. Uh, and covers a couple other different things. You can scroll up and down within this app to see different settings. Uh, it talks about how much uh, SD card life you have left. What your gimbal status is at. How your battery's doing. Your aircraft battery. Things like that. It's very straightforward. I'm going to close this for the time being, and we're going to go ahead and look at a couple different other things on here. One of the most important things is this little section right here where it shows the satellite view. Currently for me, it says 12, and it has five bars completely lit up. Ideally, you want to have at least eight as the number above that little satellite. That means you've connected to eight satellites. And that's a very good signal, at least a as a baseline. 12 is even better. So obviously I'm doing really good in the area that I'm at. Another thing you want to notice is this section over here where it has the little drone type symbol and it says PGPS on my particular uh, app at the moment. Let's click on that. If you click on that, you're going to see that it talks about a bunch of different things. There's a whole bunch of different tabs here that you can click on. This starting one is MC settings, which is very important. You can also go to remote controller settings. You can click on the Wi-Fi settings. You can click on the aircraft battery. You can click on the gimbal settings. And you can click to general settings. And there's a whole bunch in each one of these. You can scroll up and down to get different menus. So let's go ahead and start with um, the um, very basic MC settings. Um, with your first flight, you're going to need to perform an IMU, inertial measurement unit, calibration. You do this through this app. Make sure that you've removed your gimbal clamp and your camera cover and make sure that your drone is placed on a flat surface. You'll see in my particular case, gimbal clamps removed, camera covers removed. I'm on a table. That's about as flat as it gets. So let's go ahead and cover IMU calibration. If you're up in the MC settings, in other words, your little drone icon up in the left there is blue. 
If you scroll down to the bottom, which means you're lifting your finger upwards, you'll see a section down there that says advanced settings. Let's click on that. Now that you have that selected, you want to hit sensors. Now you're going to see this screen with a whole bunch of numbers that are moving around and you're going to see two things listed at the bottom. Check IMU and IMU calibration. We want to do an IMU calibration. Select that. It says, please keep the aircraft stationary and horizontal during calibration. Calibration process will take five to 10 minutes. Go ahead and do that. Follow the instructions and make sure and do this before your very first flight. Also, make sure that you are outside and away from any potential electrical interference. Let's go ahead and get prepared for our very first flight. Make sure that your drone controller is turned on first. You always want to have your drone controller on first. Then go ahead and turn on your drone. So let's go ahead and go through that whole process. So, with your controller, go ahead, flip your switch to the right. Hopefully you have four LEDs, which means you have it charged all the way. Then you're going to look over to your drone, go to the battery area, press once for the battery, and then press again, hold two seconds, and you'll see that all four battery lights should hold on. You'll get a tone, and you'll notice the camera moved a little bit during it as well. That means that your drone is basically preparing for flight. You'll hear a very mild tone. You'll see some flashing from your status indicators as well. Okay, let's go ahead and turn this guy around. All right. Next, what you're going to want to do is connect your phone to the actual drone itself using Wi-Fi on your phone. So, let's connect to Wi-Fi on our device. I have an Android Note 4. You may have a different Android device or you may have an iPhone. Either way, you should know how to connect to the uh, Wi-Fi using your device. But in case you don't, refer to somebody else. I'm not going to cover that in this video. For my particular phone, you'll drop it down and you'll hit Wi-Fi. And I'm going to look at the settings and look for my Wi-Fi network. You'll see that it just said that I connected because I've connected to it before. But you're going to be basically looking for uh, the network that says Phantom 3 underscore. And then it's going to have a series of numbers and letters. My particular one says Phantom 3 underscore 06 BDC 6. You'll notice it already says connected for mine. You're going to have to actually tap on whatever network you have, and then the very first time you're going to have to enter a password. The default password for this is 12341234. So in other words, 1234 twice in a row. Um, that's going to go ahead and connect it. You only have to do that once unless you change the password for your device. Next, once you have all that taken care of, you're going to go ahead and open the DJI Go app. Once the DJI Go app is open, you'll again want to scroll over to get to your Phantom 3 standard, as we covered before. You're going to want to enter camera mode. And let's go ahead and put this in our little handy dandy controller. All right. Okay. Now that we've got this set, you should notice that everything is looking good. Hopefully you've already updated your firmware as we already covered earlier in this video. Hopefully your compass is calibrated. Oh, we haven't covered compass calibration. Let's go ahead and cover that. So in this particular screen, the aircraft status screen, if you're not here, I'm going to close this for the moment. If you're not here, you will hit safe to fly GPS and you're going to see compass calibrate. Mine says normal. Yours may not. So if it doesn't say that it's normal, we're going to hit calibrate. And it's going to say calibrate compass. Ensure there are no magnets or metal objects near your compass. Hit OK. OK. Make sure no magnets or metal objects are within uh, 1.5 meters or 5 feet approximately of the compass. Rotate your aircraft 360 degrees horizontally. Let's go over that. So, for the first screen for calibration, it's saying that you need to hold your drone horizontally, which means as if it's sitting on the ground, and turn 360 degrees. You'll turn a complete circle, and then your status indicator should turn a solid green or a solid yellow in the back. Next, it's going to say to hold your drone in a vertical 
<clears throat> position, and you're gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing. Rotate 360 degrees, turn back, you'll notice that I now have flashing green. That completes the calibration. A couple extra notes with calibration. If you did it correctly, your air aircraft indicator should turn solid yellow or solid green. You've already done your entire horizontal and vertical procedure. If your indicators flash yellow or flash red after either of these, then go ahead and try them again. Do your compass calibration again. If it still won't work after several tries, you may need to try a new location because you may have interference. Once you've done these procedures though, you're completely ready to fly. Now, we're ready to go over the directions with your joystick and show liftoff. Okay, we have made it to the actual flight portion of using your drone. Make sure that you have your drone on, your remote controller on, your uh, DJI Go app already activated and connected. We show safe to fly. Everything looks good here. If this is green and safe to fly with GPS, that means that your drone is going to be locked in position once it's in the air. If it is yellow up here and says that you're not having GPS connection, that means that every little gust of wind is going to be very difficult for you to control and you're going to be using it manually without the lock. That's a lot tougher. That's what I face using it back in the Redwoods where I'm at. So let's go ahead and practice starting. Remember what I said for our controls. If you push upwards with this controller, that's going to be liftoff. If you push downwards, that's going to tell it to land. Left is rotate to the left. Right is rotate to the right. On your right set of controls, this is moving forward in the air. This is moving backwards in the air. This is scrolling to the left and this is scrolling to the right. So let's go ahead and do liftoff. There is a special set of procedures for doing liftoff. You can either move both of your controllers down this direction, uh, horizontal, excuse me, not horizontally, uh, diagonally inwards, or you can move diagonally outwards and that will start your propellers. Watch. Now you can see that it says that my home point has been updated and that we're ready for takeoff. You'll see that I have icons over here that can go ahead and land or I can return to home. There was also a button that could go ahead and take off and lift us up into the air. I'm personally doing manual takeoff because it's just a little bit more fun. I currently have my drone facing towards me, so that means my controls are going to be a little bit reversed. You have to get used to that. If the camera's facing away from you, then everything is going to be forwards, backwards, scroll to the left, scroll to the right. If you've rotated your drone using one of these and suddenly it's facing towards you like I have my drone now, then everything is reversed. You have to get used to that. That's one of the beautiful things about seeing those red LEDs underneath the first and fourth props that are facing towards you with those red stickers. So let's go ahead and take off. I'm going to gently push upwards on the left, which raises me up in the air. I'm going to gently bring the drone towards us. You see already, there's a little bit of wind movement and the drone is moving without my control, but it's staying within about a foot or two radius thanks to the GPS lock. Okay, let's go ahead and cover some usage here. The drone is currently facing away from me, which means all of my controls should be straightforward. If I pull backwards, it's going to back up to me. If I push forwards, it's going to move away from me. If I push to the left, it'll go to the left. And if I push right, it's going to go to the right. One of the beautiful things of the DJI Go app is that you're seeing in real time what you're doing with the drone, no matter the distance away, as long as you still have appropriate connection. You're going to see a little map down here in the left hand corner showing where you're at position wise. It talks about the height. I'm currently at 185.4 feet. It talks about the, um, let's see, your speed that you're moving, which I'm currently not moving in vertical speed or horizontal speed. But you'll see if I move to the left, all of a sudden I have a heavy 10 mile per hour speed to the left. If I move to the right, I suddenly have about a 15 to 20 mile per hour speed to the right. Same thing if I'm going up and down here with vertical speeds. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of look around and do a little bit of recording. 
So what are some of the features that we talked about with this app? Well, first of all, remember this little dial over here? That's your camera gimbal dial that goes up and down to raise your camera up and down. I am now going to pull the camera dial downwards. You can't see it, it's blocking my finger a little bit, but you can see the camera's rotating downwards to see where I'm at above the school where I'm doing this recording. If I push upwards, you'll see that it's raising the camera back up to view outwards. So what if we want to do a recording combining all these features of these controls and as well as that gimbal dial that we're using down there? There's a little side scrolling screen right over here. You, it's currently set to camera when it's to the left. You can see the little camera picture. If you press that little white dot, it moves to the right. And now you'll see that it's underneath and has illuminated for the recording. So for video, if you hit the red record button, it's going to start recording and you'll see that a countdown time or a uh, stopwatch basically starts going for how long you're recording for, just like any standard video camera. One of the beautiful things about the DJI Phantom is the amazing gimbal that it has on this unit. I am now moving heavily to the left. You can barely see up in that top corner there, there was a uh, prop showing. There's a prop showing right there. And now I'm heavily moving to the right. You can see that by my horizontal speed down there, I'm going 21, 22 miles per hour. As it scrolls, the gimbal doesn't, you know, the camera doesn't move all over the place. The gimbal is adjusting to hold the camera in a perfect position. Likewise, if I'm going down, you'll see my vertical speed downwards, seven miles an hour. Or you'll see I'm going back up. Again, the gimbal's super smooth. What about if we go forward and back? you'll see those prop guards pop into view as I'm going very fast forward. What about if I'm going very fast back? You're not gonna see the prop guards this time because they're lifted above the unit, but you'll see that the camera view still holds very smooth. Occasionally my prop guards will pop in. If you don't have prop guards, you'll see the propellers themselves, but uh, the camera gimbal is amazingly stable. So, that basically covers recording. Let's go ahead and stop my recording. Let's say we want to do a picture. This looks a little bit dark because I'm down towards uh, sunset. I want to get a view of all these, I don't know, the top of the school and the orchards that are over there. It looks a little bit dark because I'm at sunset. You can hit this little menu right down here, which brings up your different things, such as your ISO, which you can adjust. If you take it off manual, you'll notice the picture got very, very brighter. I can go really, really bright. 1600. 400 is probably appropriate for where I'm at right now. You can adjust your shutter speed. There's a whole bunch of different options once you're in manual. As soon as you hit one of these adjustments, it automatically puts it into manual. Otherwise, click back to auto and it defaults everything to where it thinks should be appropriate. Although, in my personal opinion, it's pretty dark for the video that I'm seeing right now. So, that's what you can do for your different options for adjusting your camera and your video. Take that off. Another thing you can do is hit the menu button above where the camera and video are at. There you can see a whole bunch of different options for all the things that you can adjust. White balance, your styles, your colors, your format, whether it's JPEG or RAW or both your image ratio, etc. These are the main menus that you're going to use in the DJI Go app. I already know that I have uh, no objects in the way. I'm gonna go ahead and hit return to home for my device. It says return to home and land. Distance between the aircraft is less than 20 meters. It'll land if return to home is initialized. We're gonna slide to go ahead and bring it return to home. Watch the video as the device returns to home. You'll notice I can also take it out of return to home and go manually at any point just by moving the controllers. That's a fail safe feature in case you notice that your device is about to hit something nasty. Well, there's my drone. We've now returned to home. And you'll see that it automatically 
locks into place and shuts off for me. So that's return home feature. Uh, one last thing, what if you want to do it manually? Okay. Let's pretend we just did a big flight and now we're coming back home. You're going to slowly bring your joystick downwards as you come back into home. Once you hit all the way down, touching the ground, you want to hold it completely straight downwards. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions or comments, please go ahead and leave them here on this video. I hope to link to all the different sections of the video. And uh, again, this is a very beginner's type video. Uh, I'm not an expert by any means, but I do believe I've compiled a bunch of the information together in one place, which I haven't quite seen other videos do, uh, which to me as a first time pilot was pretty annoying. So hopefully this helps you out. Let me know in the comment section below.